One of the biggest questions we get asked is how we fit all of our things into this tiny little van. Today we're going to show you all of our smart storage solutions so that we have enough space for everyday essentials, seasonal changes, and enough room to prep for the upcoming potential food shortage. <laughs> You're hoarding? Apparently. <laughs> When we were first downsizing from our New York City apartment into a van, it felt ridiculous. All of this into that tiny space. But now that we're on our second van, we've realized that we don't actually need as many things as we thought to live a super comfortable lifestyle. Let's start with the most important storage, shoes. That's not the most important story. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? It's most important. Let's do it. Shoe storage area number one is right here in the secret hidden away step. The ProMaster has a big drop down from the front cab to the back living space. So we utilize this by making it a beautiful step into the front area. And then this is just held on with magnets. You pull it away. And you've got tons of shoes in here. We've got our slippers, some boots, some running shoes. These are the shoes that are kind of a little bit more in rotation. Line it up, snap it back on, and you'd never know what was there. That wood has never fallen down on us, and so it's a perfect hidden solution for specifically the ProMaster. Storage spot number two. There's usually at least one pair on the floor in here. I'm wearing them right now. And storage spot number three, the garage. We added these shoe racks to both sides. It was one really long one that we just cut in half and then drilled into the panel here. We've got a bunch of pairs of shoes here. And then this side has become more for random things that we need within the house. But of course, one big pair of boots. Moving on to the kitchen. In our last van tour series, we actually deep dived into the whole thing. So right now, I'm just gonna quickly go over each of the storage spaces for our amazing kitchen. Up top, we have all of our pantry storage. Down low, we have two giant cupboards. Everything is secured with magnets. We have all of our cooking supplies, propane, first aid kit, garbage, tons of stuff down here. Getting even lower, we have all of our tow kick storage. On this side, we have our 63 liter fridge, which holds enough fresh food for two weeks off grid. This has all of our spices, sauces, and pantry essentials. We have our cutlery drawer, which is huge, deep, and fits a lot of stuff. We're gonna get into the prepping stuff soon, but it's hidden away in secret places that we're never gonna access regularly in our daily lives, only in case of emergency. Up here, these cupboards are my dirty little secret. This is where we're gonna get tons of comments about how messy we are. Can't wait. This is if you guys have any tips on how to set these up a little bit better, we're open to all suggestions. This first one is basically all my stuff, although I try to pretend that Frank gets some kind of benefit out of this drawer. The benefits I get out of that one is there's deodorant in there. Yes. And there's also Q-tips in there. There you go. So we're sharing this space, <laughs> obviously. This is all of my toiletry stuff, makeup, skincare, there's some like sewing first aid kind of things back there. Your clippers. This is the girly cupboard. Look how cute we are. This cupboard over here is all of our electronics. We make YouTube videos, so we have a lot of camera gear. And so all of the random things that go along with that end up in here. We've got headphones, cords, memory cards. These are all like attachments and lighting and stuff like that. Also a couple of extra books, including the one that I wrote about van life, if you wanna pick that up online. We have all of our stickers that we also sell online and a bag of chips, cause who doesn't need that? This cupboard is accessed very frequently. It's hard to keep organized. We have a couple of things, like all the little tiny bits go in here, but for the most part, it's a little bit of a catch-all. We have installed in all of our cupboards these extra shelves, which are very useful. These give you an additional layer of storage rather than everything being flat on the ground of the cupboard. The caveat is that things will fly off of these cupboards when you're driving down bumpy roads. So you need to have things on them that make them a little bit more grippy. Or when you open your cupboards, how to move in here is to slide my hand up 
to catch the bag before it falls. On this side, the books are a little bit grippy, so that's good. In the kitchen, we just installed Velcro tabs on the baskets up there so that they're stuck to the bamboo shelf. That should definitely help stop them from falling over when we're driving. But with any upper cabinets, you always have to be careful. Just like they say in the airlines, things may have shifted during takeoff and landing, so be careful when you're opening the overhead compartments. Let's talk about these storage baskets. I thought they were gonna be amazing for fresh fruits and vegetables, but realistically, we hardly put any of that in there because we store most of it in the fridge. The one really good thing they're good for is when you're charging camera batteries or other things when you're driving down the road. We have a charging USB here, and then we can just put the charging inside the basket and then it's not gonna go anywhere when you're driving down the road. For all of my preppers out there, the Berkey is a great solution for having water. We have a 40 gallon tank in the back, which lasts us about two weeks off grid, but the Berkey allows you to take any kind of water, whether it be potable water or just river stream water, the charcoal filters will clean it for you. I hope that we don't ever get to a place where we need to be sourcing all of our water from the river, but if we do, we're set. The biggest questions we got on the kitchen tour was how do we actually set up the Berkey? What I did is I put two hook and eyes up here into the wall, and then I got this rubber bungee cord from Walmart, and I strap it around it. I made sure that the hook and eyes are at the distance where it makes it nice and tight and snug to the wall. Over time, you're gonna get a little bit of play. It works perfectly. One thing we did to stop the rattling is we put this armor flex on the top, so when you put the top down, we have no rattle. Every single house, whether it's a van or a stationary home, has one of these drawers. This is our junk drawer. We have walkie-talkies, so we put that in the drawer when they're fully charged. This is where all of our magnets sit for uh, our showers and whenever we want to hang anything from our ceiling. We have tons of extra headlamps in here just in case. You never know what's gonna happen. If there's no batteries, we have plenty of headlamps. We have extra batteries in the storage area, as well as tape if you ever need it. We have a little wind-up radio. Moving to the back area. We used to have a stationary bed, now we have a convertible bed. We gave up a ton of storage space in order to have this dinette. For us, it's worth it because we love hosting and entertaining. For others, it might not be. One amazing thing we have back here is a 40 gallon water tank in one tank underneath the floor. Look at my sexy sock and stock combo. Water tank lives inside of here. There are two main storage components in this back bench area. Let's start with the clothing. On both sides of the bench seat, we have these bump outs. These are great for your back. So when you're sitting, it's like a nice rest for your back away from the wall. You can write, you can put a pillow up there if you wanted to. They also double as huge clothing storage. One of the clever things that we did in this area, because it is a little bit narrow, is we utilized shoe racks. Frankie's sister actually gave us this idea. She was using it for her daughter's travel clothing. We've got two layers of shoe storage that's holding one, two, three, four, eight, at least 16 t-shirts, because usually we'll put a t-shirt on the bottom and then another t-shirt on top. And then you have all this empty area up top to be able to kind of stash bigger items like rolled up pants and sweaters. This area does require a little bit of finessing. They lock up with hook and eye in the front and in the back. We found it to be a very handy storage solution. We've been talking recently about potentially adding some upper cabinets back here. The downside of that is when we're all sitting around, where is the upper cabinet going? I'm a pretty short person. If we have anybody tall come to visit, they won't be able to sit at the table. And that's the whole point of the table. The solution is if we put a small shelf that bumped out to here, but it was high, yeah, there wouldn't be too much clearance, but you could either fold up t-shirts or you could put like cans. This is a cup, but this is about the size of a can. You could probably fit cans up in the storage as well. So if we wanted to have more can storage for dry goods, we could fit a lot more stuff up on top. The other storage area back here is actually easier to show you if we take down the table, so let's do that first. Slightly inconvenient when you have a storage space like this. There are ways to go around that. What you could probably do is, you know, cut out this bottom area and make doors, like sliding doors on it. 
Um, that is something we didn't think of. Remember, what we're trying to do is always give you guys the opportunity to recreate and rethink. We know that our space is not perfect, but we think it, we came pretty close to what's perfect for us. We normally don't take the table down to get into our storage, but for the process of the video, it just makes it easier to film and for you guys to be able to see everything that's underneath. Let's start on this left side here. Paco's in my way, so he's gonna have to hold this couch. You got it, buddy? All right, it's like a little den for you, right? Good? Right. Bench sheet is exactly the same on both sides. One thing that I think I would do is possibly cut it down the middle, so that way when you lift it, you could just lift a certain section, as well as put a recess in the wood so it's easy to reach your hand in and grab. These doors have a tendency to slam shut. You can either put some gas struts or a magnet or hook and eye, anything to keep it from just falling down on you. Right now we are on an angle, so this side will stay up no problem, where the other side will fall down. We have an exceptional amount of storage underneath these bench seats. They're kind of hard to almost get to, because it's so deep. We could probably make levels that I think would make the situation a little bit better. So when you're building out your van, think strategically about where you want to set everything and maybe build some levels so that way it's easy to get to. The best part about the storage space is we could fit so much stuff. Fit four snowboards, helmets, extra shoes, anything that we're gonna need in summertime that we're not gonna need in winter, we could store in this space and just kind of set it and forget it. This right here is one of the locations where we keep some of our canned goods and stuff for long-term storage just in case there's a food shortage. <laughs> you hoarding? Apparently. <laughs> One of the biggest difference between this side here and that side over there is this side has all the electrical, so we have to play around that. There's a lot of batteries and wires and everything on this side, so you have a lot less storage compared to that side. And everything's tightly packed. The ladder always goes in last. Biggest thing that you wanna remember is the stuff closest to the back door is the stuff that you're gonna to wanna to access immediately. A couple of storage points that we did not think about when we were building this bed area. Number one is that your nightly pillows that you sleep on have to be daytime throw pillows because there's really nowhere for them to go. We didn't think about putting our bedding anywhere, which was maybe a little bit clueless, so that's a tip for you. Our solution, though, is this pretty basket. Woo. We found this at the container store. It fits all of our sheets and a giant duvet and one of our nighttime pillows. So this will either live under the table or if we want the room for our legs, we'll throw this in one of the front seats so it's out of the way. We also have ended up with a couple of knapsacks under here. We use the bags fairly frequently, whether to go to the library or go to the gym, or just to leave the house with or fly with, things like that. So we need the knapsacks, but we don't really have anywhere to keep them. So they live under the table. Could probably stuff them underneath in the storage area over here, but realistically, we use them extremely often, so it's not worth it. As you guys know from the bathroom tour, I'm currently sitting on the toilet. Actually, I guess the shower. <laughs> this is another great storage area and where we keep some of our prepping stash. On this side for storage, we have all of our dirty laundry, towels, extra toiletries, shower curtain, so much stuff for like bathroom storage. Underneath the toilet is actually where we're hiding some of our prepping stash. In our bathroom tour, a lot of people were questioning why we don't line the toilet with a plastic bag. Originally, we were thinking that we would be in more wild places, that we could dump it without any plastic use at all, but we're finding that that's not always the case. So we do have this canister here full of plastic bags that we can use for the toilet. And after we dump this one, we're probably gonna start lining it. Our first item in the prepping stash is a big bag of rice. It's only the two of us, so this should last us a couple of weeks easily. Then we picked up this big plastic storage container. We know that behind the toilet isn't necessarily the most hygienic place to store food, but obviously these are all bagged up. 
like they are airtight and nothing's actually getting into the food. This is an electrolyte water, a big bag of rice. We're mostly plant-based, so we picked up a couple of packets of wild-caught pink salmon just for some extra protein if needed. And then we have all of our dried beans. So we have lentils, black beans, kidney beans, navy beans, and some more lentils. It's actually really easy to pack all of this away, and we do still have some extra space in here, so next time we're at the store, we might even pick up a little bit more. On all the preppers list, dry beans are preferred over canned beans. They do take a little bit longer to cook, but they're so easy to store away. We're just getting started on our prepper's journey. We have even more space than we thought. We know that the storage behind the toilet is gonna to be a little bit controversial, so if you like it, be sure to smash the like button, and if you think we could come up with something better, let us know in the comments down below. One very important storage area that a lot of people forget about is the front cab. On top here, we have tons of storage. We did a whole project about removing the factory lining to gain an extra three inches. We have a whole video about how we did that. But so now we have these two baskets full of tons of sweaters and bulky top. Over here is a little bit of Paco's basket. This has all of his different outfits for different weather changes and also one or two extra purses that I have for different occasions. We have all of our fitness stuff, so two yoga mats, a roller, we have stretchy bands and lacrosse balls, things like that, our little home fitness gym over here. Because we took out the factory lining, you do have to remember that there's no lip here to stop anything falling out. So occasionally, you know, especially on a really bad road, maybe some of these things will fly out. Doesn't happen very often, but it's just something to keep in mind. If you're gonna have anything breakable up here, you really wanna make sure that it's secured. By having these baskets in place, they're actually like, not the easiest to get out, so they're not gonna go anywhere, but another great storage solution rather than just having everything shoved up there. This part of the factory build we left in place. This is where we keep all of our hats, whether they're summertime hats or beanies, and then we have a great big sunglasses collection. In each of our side doors are more random bibs and bobs. Frankie's is more full of tools and electrical fuses for some reason. I don't ask questions, I let him live his life the way that he wants to, it's his door. My side's got stuff like lip gloss and stickers and also window covers that are nice when it's super sunny outside that you can kind of put a little shade on your window. The other useful storage area over here is underneath these seats. Under my seat is actually the jack for the car, so we're gonna leave that in place. But under Frank's seat is empty, so that's where we keep our camping chairs and some other random things that I think he just put in there yesterday. The ProMaster actually has an upper storage area as well as the lower storage area here. So all of our obviously important documents for the vehicle are in there, our park passes, things like that, that we'll always have at the ready. Now that we're in the winter months and it's actually pretty cold in here right now, we've been storing our winter coats on the back of this seat. We've got my big winter coat here, Frank's is underneath. We do have a section in the back for hanging big coats, which we'll utilize sometimes, but this is your everyday grab and go area. And I might grab this right now so we can show you the next section. Right here is Paco's storage and it doubles as another food storage area. Open this door up, it's hidden underneath our shower. We have a lot of we have a lot of little Paco treats. We have our bucket or our bin so we can put the water in from the lake or the river or from our sink if we want to have a shower. But then we also have storage like pasta in here and there's even a bunch of cans lining in the back area. Remember, this is food that we're only gonna touch in case of emergency. So it's there forever and only if we need it. 11 cans of storage in this space right here alone. I'm pretty happy with all the storage that we have just in case of emergency. The crazy part is, is this area is not even full so we could pack even more in here if we needed to. But remember, we are trying to be minimalists so we're not going to overpack our space. The thing that I absolutely love about this storage is the fact when we drilled these in, we did not drill into the metal, we actually drilled into the plastic. So the plastic piece here that goes into the wall is holding it up. We don't have to worry about touching it up for any type of rust because it's held up by the plastic. Right in the back here we have the most accessible things, the things that we'll use the most. 
We have our ladder here, that way we could get up on the roof, we could clean our solar panels, we could just hang out because we have the deck up there, we could get our longboards off there. In the winter time, I'm actually gonna be storing the snowboards on top of the roof deck, that way we're not bringing any moisture into the van. We will have the access of the ladder, that way we could just pull it right out and get right up there. Next, right behind the ladder, we have our hose. This is the way that we fill up our water tank. So this has to be very ready and accessible. We fill up every two weeks. Just below that, we have our hookup for our shore power. If we want to hook up to somebody's house or we have a 30 amp port that we could connect to, we could easily access this and be able to charge our battery bank in times where we don't have enough sunlight or we're not driving often. Since the winter is coming up, we have our snowboard boots here at the ready, as well as our snow stocks for our front tires. This is a perfect solution instead of having chains if you're gonna be doing highway driving. In the winter time, we don't really go off-road that often, so I don't think that we need the chains. We're gonna stick with the snow socks and we'll let you know how it goes. We also have some windshield washer fluid right here at the ready. You never know when you're getting low on that, so it's great to have it right there. That way we can pull it right out and fill up. Ever wanna cook outside, we have our cooktop right here, ready to go. Just slide it right out and we could cook. With that being said, we do carry one of these little green tanks on us. That way, if we are ever in an emergency and we run out inside with our propane, we always have this little guy. We can hook up to that and we can finish whatever, we can cook whatever we want. We do have slippers in here. These are our shower shoes. We use them fairly often every time we go into a Love's truck stop or any other truck stop, or if we're gonna stop at a gym, we have our shoes ready to go and we can take a shower really quick and easy. But right here, we have this little hook system where we can, wow, it's snowing. <laughs> That's awesome. Here we have this hook system where we can hang up jackets or sweatshirts in the back of the van. They're pretty easy to access. We just reach over, pull them up, ready to go. They actually don't get in the way when we're sleeping, which surprised me because I thought for sure it was gonna be in my way. I love sports, so I have a basketball that's deflated in the back here. I also have some frisbees, some disc golf, a mitt if anybody wants to play catch. That's never happened, not once, but I'm hoping for that day. So if we meet on the road and you have a glove and a ball, let's play catch. Three other things we have ready to go at all times. We have our high pressure, high flow water filter for when we're filling up our water. We have our mat that we could pull right out and throw right in front of our door. Flexible solar panel or a foldable solar panel. That way if we need to charge our Max Oak system, we could click that right up. We could pull that right out and click it up and get a charge going. One last thing I will say that we have is we do have an emergency light back here. So we can just pull this out, it's ready to go and we have these magnets on it. I think I said ready to go about 14 times. Probably. So. Drink if you heard ready to go. I think that you'll agree that we have tons of storage in our tiny space. We have two weeks of food on the ready and then we have a couple weeks extra of storage. Hopefully this has answered all of your questions about storage solutions in vans. If you have ideas for us about how we could do it better, please let us know in the comments below. Let us know what you liked as well. And if you wanna see the rest of our van tour series where we deep dive into the details of the van, click the playlist right here. I think it's probably here. It was one of these ways, <laughs> who knows? We'll see you guys over there. Thank you so much for watching and have an F&A day.